Your jackets are green and your waistline thick. Sometimes your food makes me sick. I love you a little more in every way because you're my mother. Happy Mother's Day! When I was finished with my poem, there was complete silence, and suddenly my sister Eva burst into laughter. <laughs> Poem. I looked at mom and my eyes welled with tears. Then mom stood up and applauded. Bravo, bravo. Oh, sweetheart, that was the best poem ever. Hey, my name's Tanya. And if you want to hear about the biggest sibling rivalry of the century, keep watching. My sister Eva and I were born to a mother who was a world-renowned author known for her amazing stories. But our dad was a struggling dancer and a pretty bad one at that. Luckily, I took after mom and loved writing. I dreamt of publishing my stories one day like mom. So I'd spend hours in my room creating the most amazing stories ever. The snake slithered in the dark cave. If the salty sea breeze kissed Captain Silver on his cheek. But Eva took after Dad and wanted to be a world-famous dancer. Heck, she wanted everyone in the family to be a dancer. Tanya, you should give up writing and become a dancer. You'll never make it as a writer with that lisp. You see, I had a lisp. And because of it, my S's and Z's sound like th. At school, kids teased me about it and I didn't have any friends. This obviously meant I was super shy and avoided talking to people. Eva, on the other hand, was super popular with tons of friends who were always ready to see her newest dance moves no matter how crazy they were. Growing up, even though Eva teased me about my lisp, we were pretty good friends. But then everything changed. When Eva and I turned 13, our parents started fighting like crazy. They were always arguing over bills and couldn't even stand to be in the same room with each other. A few months later, Dad left and we never saw him again. Good riddance to you and your poverty. Huh. Eva and I were devastated. But after Dad left, Mom changed. She hated each and everything about Dad. So she tried to steer Eva away from dancing. Eva, dancing is dumb. But I'm good at it, Mom. Honey, I've seen you trip over your own two feet more times than I can count. Then I'll stumble my way to the stars. When Mom realized she was talking to a brick wall, she turned all her attention to me. Tanya, another A in creative writing? Let's celebrate. She ignored Eva completely, no matter how how much Eva tried to win her over. Mom, I won the talent show at school today with my dancing skills. It didn't matter what Eva accomplished. Mom never praised her and Eva began to hate me for hogging mom's attention and tried to make me look bad in front of her. About a week after our 15th birthday, mom hosted a small gathering and asked me to make caramelized apples for the guests. I was super excited and the apples smelled amazing. But when the guests tasted the apples, they almost puked. These are disgusting. Is that dish soap? Yep, sure enough, my sister switched my caramelized apples with apples covered in dish soap. Another time, mom invited her writing friends over, and while I was in the middle of reading my stories, Eva walked in with a radio in her hand, blaring hip-hop music. She twirled, leaped, and swayed to the rhythm. For a second, everyone was impressed. But then, disaster struck as Eva tried to execute a dramatic spin. Her foot accidentally connected with the edge of the table, sending the fishbowl flying, and poor Benny landed in mom's editor's mouth. Mom was furious. Yes, Eva, no more dancing ever. You have no right to take dancing away from me. I'm your mother, and what I say goes. I hate you. That night, Mom removed every device that could play music in the house. Eva looked ready to explode. The next day was Saturday, and I woke up to the worst screeching sound coming from Eva's room. When I got to Eva's room, she was huffing and puffing with wild enthusiasm into a harmonica. Eva, you sound like you're strangling cats. Since I can't dance, I'm still starting our school's first harmonica club. Eva smirked devilishly as she blew once more into the harmonica. <sighs> she was so annoying. I returned to my bedroom and tried to block out the noise, but then neighborhood dogs began to howl in unison. Oh God, make it stop. I decided that I needed to get out of the house if I was gonna get any peace and quiet. Angrily, I gathered my books and ran out to the park. As I was walking past the pond in the park, someone screamed, look out. But before I could react, someone crashed into me, sending us tumbling into the pond. I sputtered and stood up utterly drenched. No! My precious stories were now a pile of soggy pages soaked beyond recognition. I'm so sorry. I couldn't stop. I was so furious and devastated that I could power a rocket to Mars with the steam coming out of my ears. <sighs> it's not your fault. It's my sisters, her and her stupid harmonica. I marched home with a thunderous fury in my steps, each one echoing my building frustration. As I prepared to confront Eva, I burst through the front door, and there Eva was, sitting in the living room. I threw my ruined stories at her. Because of you, my 
stories are ruined. With a rush of adrenaline, I lunged at Eva, and the living room became a war zone. A few minutes later, Mom walked through the front door and pulled us apart. Why are you girls fighting? I quickly explained what happened to Mom, while Eva fumed on the other side of her. Everything I worked so hard on is now gone. And how is that my fault, Sonia? If you weren't playing that stupid harmonica, I wouldn't have had to leave the house. Eva, you're grounded. Go to your room, now. Eva glared at us and then stormed off. Don't worry, Tanya. Together, we'll create more stories from that big, beautiful brain of yours. Over the next few days, Mom and I spent hours huddled together, weaving new stories to replace the ones that were lost. Our collaboration was nothing short of magical. About a month later, I had completed 20 incredible short stories which Mom took to her publisher. And guess what? He loved it! With Mom's help, I had just accomplished my first major writing achievement. Eek! I can't believe I'm about to become a published author! Congratulations, Tanya. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Mom. I couldn't do it without you. News about my first book spread through the school like wildfire, and it wasn't long before I became more popular than Eva. Over the next year, with the help of specialists, my lisp improved, and I published two more books. The more famous I got, the more rebellious Eva got. She'd come home late, started skipping school, and hung out with the wrong crowd. One afternoon while at the mall, I even caught her trying to shoplift. Eva, what are you doing? What I'm doing is none of your business, Tanya. It is my business because you're my sister and I care about you. You care about me so much that not once have you stood up for me since mom banned me from dancing. A wave of guilt washed over me. Eva was right. I was so caught up following my dream while her dreams remained out of reach. Eva, maybe we can talk to mom together. Eva's eyes darkened and she leaned close, our faces inches apart. No need, because soon you'll realize that dreams don't last forever. Eva brushed past me and left the store. On my way home, my mind was still reeling from my encounter with Eva, so I decided that a few donuts would help brighten my mood. Much to my surprise, Pond Boy was behind the cash register. Hey, it's you. What are you doing here? Pond Boy flashed me a mischievous smile. Gotta keep an eye on the coffee beans. They can be quite mischievous, always plotting to escape. <laughs> so, your coffee bean security? Just call me Captain Beanie. In a much more serious tone, he added, By the way, I'm Alex. Tanya, after receiving my order, I sat at one of the tables. When Alex had finished his shift, he joined me. I told him about the three books I published with Mom's help, while he told me about his life. I grew up in an orphanage and was adopted by a nice couple about a year ago. I'm glad you finally have a family. A strange look crossed Alex's face, and he smiled. So do I. Alex was kind and smart and super easy to talk to. Over the next few weeks, when I wasn't at school or writing, I was hanging out with Alex. One afternoon, I invited Alex home to watch movies. I had gone into the kitchen to get snacks, and when I returned, Alex and Eva were laughing and talking as if they'd known each other for years. And sure enough, over the next two weeks, Alex was hanging out with Eva more than he was with me. I was furious. So, you're ditching me again to hang out with Eva? Tanya, she's your sister. I don't see what the problem is. I couldn't help but feel jealous. Alex was supposed to be my friend, not Eva's. I decided to confront him about it at the cafe. When I got there, he was deep in thought as he stared at a picture that he was holding. I snuck behind him to glance at the picture, and I gasped when I realized that it was a picture of Eva. Are you stalking my sister? You creep! Startled, Alex fumbled with the picture and shoved it into his pocket. It's nothing like that, Tanya. Please, keep your voice down. You want me to keep my voice down? You befriended me to get to my sister, didn't you? I did, but it's not what you think. Then explain it to me. What Alex said next turned my world upside down. Ava is my sister. I looked at Alex and began laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being pranked? Do you have hidden cameras in here? Alex shook his head, and I saw the sadness in his eyes. What? Are you serious? It has to be a mistake. One day, the orphanage director asked me to bring out some files from his office, and I accidentally dropped them. I noticed my mother's name and a picture of her. Out of curiosity, I opened the file and saw that mom had a twin birth. So I jotted down the name of the person who adopted my sister and traced it back to your family. I was stunned and hurt. Why would mom keep something like this a secret for 17 years? I understood why Alex ditched me. He wanted to spend time getting to know his sister. I knew I had to do something. You're coming with me. Before he could say no, I grabbed his hand and dragged him out of the cafe all the way home. Mom, 
Eva, where are you? Mom came out from the kitchen, but Eva was nowhere to be seen. When were you going to tell Eva that she was adopted? A look of horror appeared on Mom's face. Who, who, who told you that? It doesn't matter. Mom, is it true? Is Eva adopted? Mom sank into the sofa. Yes, it's true. Eva is adopted. We heard a gasp, and we all looked up to see Eva frozen at the top of the stairs, her eyes as wide as saucers. She turned around and bolted to her room, and I ran after her. Just as she was about to slam her door on me, I rammed the door with my shoulder hard, sending the both of us flying into the room. Mom and Alex rushed into the room, and Mom knelt by my side. Tanya, are you okay? Mom, I'm fine. Eva needs you. Why didn't you tell us? I looked across at Eva, who was staring out of the window. Her shoulders shook slightly, and I knew she was crying. Mom went over to her while Alex helped me to my feet. Mom tried to touch Eva's shoulders, but she shrugged Mom off. Is this why you never liked me? Because you're not my mother? Eva, you are my daughter, and I love you. Around the time Tanya was born, we visited the orphanage for a charity run, and we fell in love with you, so we brought you home. Eva turned to face Mom, her mascara mingled with tears running down her cheeks. What type of love makes you rip my dreams and toss them into the garbage? Mom was in tears. Eva, loving something and being able to make it into a career are two different things. I love to sing, but I sound like a frog with a tuba stuck in my throat. And I love to play the harmonica, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> oh, OMG, you guys really are siblings. The worst harmonic duo in history. A small smile curved onto Eva's lips. As your mother, it's my job to tell you the truth. Maybe together we can think about what you're really good at and take it from there. But you should have told me. I'm sorry I didn't. Can you forgive me? I think so, but I need time to process it all. Now that you guys have made up, Mom, do you mind taking me to the hospital? Over the next few months, <laughs> Eva and I grew closer, and I was happy to see Mom and Eva spending more time together. Alex and his parents came to dinner once a week, but Alex was always hanging out at our house. I didn't lose a sister. I gained a brother, an aunt, and an uncle. Once Eva and I graduated from high school, I went to college, and Eva started her harmonica band. <laughs> Just kidding. Eva didn't know what she wanted to do yet, so she got a job at the cafe, and Alex and Mom supported her. And after two years, Alex and Eva decided to open their own cafe, and Eva went to college to get a degree in business. No family is perfect, but a supportive family is everything.